Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Product 12 Podcast. I'm Tristan Tilma. And I'm Jared Somerville. I'm Hunter Latchuk. Um, and welcome back. Uh, welcome to the new year, 2023. Yeah, it how's... Yeah, um, I almost forgot the year. How's, how's your new year been so far? Uh, so far, it's been great. I've just been working, been chilling, and uh, yeah, waiting for you to get back. So we Yeah, can I went on a hefty three-week vacation, you know, and now we're back in school. Busy up the ass, but always going to make time for this. It's fun. Um... Yeah, we watched uh, 7500. 7, that was the last film we, we talked about, or that we said we were going to watch. Yeah, that was the one that we ended the last podcast with. Yeah. Um, what, what, what new, what new? We got The Last of Us that came out. Yeah, The Last of Us is that dropped. It was pretty great. Yeah. Last of Us is awesome. And, and we then, got uh, some, sorry, we got some plans for the new year as well. Some good plans that we have coming up. I don't know how much we can talk about. Yeah, it'll um, be a, probably a little quicker, shorter uh, podcast. About but, half hour, 45. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, we'll just jump right into it. Yeah, we'll start off. Uh, Last of Us? Yeah, sure, we can talk about Last of Us first. Um, Hunter, why don't you open? I mean, I watched the episode twice already, so the first episode, to me, it's... I really enjoyed it. I loved everything about it. Um, I didn't find much problems with it. Granted, mm-hmm. I haven't played all the way through the game. Oh, yeah, that's what true. What I have played was mostly in the first episode. Oh, right, you haven't actually finished the first game. No, yeah, so. that was so weird. I remember you told me that, like, because you wanted to come over and play part one, the remake. I was like, the fuck you mean? You've never played this this game before? Because, I, like, I've played the game, and I was the kid that, ne- that didn't have a PS3. I just assumed that, like, you played it, like, at the same time Tristan did in, like, 2014. No, I yeah, just I never did. Damn. Never got around to it, so. Yeah, it... It, yeah, it was definitely an experience. I didn't play it until like 2015 when I got my PS4. That was great. Last was last was the video game story changed me as a little kid back in 2014. <laughs> I was like, wow, emotionally moved by it. And now here it comes again. The first episode drops, hits with the same emotional impact. It's like, mm-hmm. damn, yeah. God, back right into it. It I'm very excited to see what comes from it. I can't believe because the video video game adaptations have been questionable for the last couple of years. <laughs> Even with Naughty Dog's last video game adaptation, Uncharted, it wasn't no, it amazing. Was weak. Yeah. It was a I, in my opinion. I thought it was fine. It was. It was, a movie. It was just yeah. I, I don't know. It just like those doesn't. They don't feel like they honor what they're coming from. They're mm. just like it. Just it, they're just referencing it or like making like an homage to it kind of. Yeah, thing. Like, like they're like, just choosing a set piece from the game because it was cool. And yeah, they're just, like they're it, just it taking feel like... like what they thought was sweet about the video games and then turning it into like one thing. Whereas The Last of Us is just taking like the story as a whole. Like if watch the if you play the video game, then watch the first episode. It is yeah. basically feels like you're playing the but beginning of the game. Again. It builds off it because when you're playing a video game, you're you're locked down to the perspective of one character mm. and also like the gameplay loop and all that stuff. Yeah. So there's only so much story that you can get from the limited cutscenes that play every like 20, 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. But like with, with the show, with the narrative that can bounce between characters and different perspectives and different timelines and whatnot, flashbacks or we well, can do flashbacks in the game too, but. It really flashes out the world more. Like my favorite scene out of the first episode was the first five minutes for before oh, the opening yeah. credits. I agree. It was so good. Mm-hmm. It was basically just exposition, technically, just a monologue from a scientist in the late sixties explaining that fungus is the, the one of the scariest things that we should like worry about. And yeah, when he. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut it you It was off. great. It was no, it was it was good. It was so scary, and he there was no action, there was no guts, no zombies or infected. Sorry, but. Well, there was, all the use, there was the beginning of Infected, yeah. Yeah, it was all the use of sound and just the suspense. And yeah. Like, if you've played the games and you know what's going to happen, like, you're already picking up on, like, what he's talking about. And it just makes you more, like, it's an, in, like, it's scary. Like, the yeah. first five minutes is like, holy shit. This you is, can like, tell, real, like, the, like, this feels real. Yeah. You can tell, like, the interviewers had, like, no idea that was coming. They were just, like, yeah. they were just joking around. Like, oh, yeah, viruses. I mean, they're pretty cool. They're pretty, we can, they can treat that no, shit. No, but seriously, yeah. what I was going to say was um, when he said that, like, in the show, he's like, yeah, sure, fungus is not a problem right now. It's not a big deal. But when your planet heats up, and like and then yeah. it was like I was like oh shit that's true like global warming <laughs> yeah. isn't yeah. like our planet is heating up what kind of like new funguses will develop with the like the new like climate but it's like it is interesting to think about it that one got me when he said that I was like oh that's oh, a little shit. 
That's a little scary. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie that's, to you, uh, but I mean, uh, it's definitely extremely over dramatized. Oh, oh obviously, well, obviously, well, yeah. but like, still, it's like the thought of that it's still idea a as like because a fungus developing because of our planet getting yeah. warmer through and our change. world nowadays. That's what is happening. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like it's getting warmer every day by day. Well, it's like, yeah. look, so it's but just, it's like the same thing. That look what happened with COVID nineteen. That virus came out of nowhere and shut us down. It's like who knows if fucking the next one's just gonna be it. like a. A fucking actual serious goddamn yeah. pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Um, people eat each scary. other. I am super stoked to, for episode two because, yeah. Th- yeah, this is definitely going to be one of the shows every week where you're waiting for it to come out oh, like yeah. the minute it comes out. Oh yeah, this and is definitely the new early Game of Thrones for me. I've been I've been used to the episodes for a new show unlocking like at the midnight or one a.m. for the the Los Angeles time like of that day, but like this shit doesn't. It comes out at like nine p.m. that day, so you gotta wait the whole day. And wait for that exact time in, in that night for it to come out. Oh, it's like, great. Fuck. I'm happy for that. Comes out at like 7 p.m. for us. Yeah. Um, so we just. It's a great time. It's great. I mean, you have time. dinner, sit down with your family, watch the last episode. The I, newest work, episode of the last I work week. every Sunday, so I will be at work when it drops, but I'll watch it when I get home. Yeah. Yeah. Have Last of Us parties. And yeah, dude. It's like what we used to do with Game of Thrones back when it was there. And we used to have like every single weekend, we'd have like 14, 15 people over to come watch the newest episode of Game of Thrones. Yeah. And now it's like the same thing with The Last of Us. Everyone come over and watch the newest episode of The Last of Us. Yeah. And oh, it's great because basically everyone I've talked to has, has like at least knows of the show and, and is excited for the show to come out. Because locally speaking, everyone like obviously saw the show was shooting here. And if you turn on the news at some point over the day, they're going to be like, yeah, the last one was shooting just down there. And people are like, oh, cool, oh, big show. So crazy, dude. Yeah. Literally, like, the first opening like of the, like of in the city after like the opening cutscene is you see the Aqua Taco truck, which is like a food truck yeah, that's here in Cochrane. Yeah. It drives around. I was like, that, I literally have gotten food from that truck. It was at our high school. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. Remember yeah. that oh. day when they brought all the food trucks? Like, oh, back that in, like, disaster yeah, of a fucking yeah. day. Yeah, disaster of a day. Yeah, <laughs> Aqua Taco fuck. was Aqua Taco was one of the food trucks there. Everyone showed up to school like in, like the, to the next class after lunch break like an hour in yeah. because the li- lineups were so bad. Oh, well, yeah. Every single person there was like eight hundred kids getting tacos yeah, that was in like a, a thirty minute span of they didn't, time. They didn't no think one that could serve that. Didn't think that through. Um, yeah, but yeah, Sarah's death. Spoiler. Um, if you haven't played the game, spoilers. Sarah's death. Sarah, Sarah's death was damn. It hit just. You knew hard. it was coming. You knew it was fucking coming, but, but it, it still hit. was so brutal it's just and so hard. sad. Oh yeah. my god! Even my parents were just like, "Holy fuck!" I was sitting there, just like, "Yeah." Yeah, no. My mom yeah. and dad, who have never like even like heard of the Last of Us, like they've heard us talking about the video game because we played it, but um, they had yeah, never heard anything about it, seen anything about it, and they just they were yeah, they were fucking shook by it. Yeah. yeah. No, I need to show my parents the show because I think they'll like it. I think yeah, everybody will like the show. It's a good story, a man. Good you story. can't just not. I mean, like that's also why they turned it into a TV show. Yeah. Because it's just too good of a story to leave for just the people who play video games mm-hmm. to experience. Absolutely. Like, you got to bring it to the world, man. And yeah. hell yeah, Pedro brings it, and freaking so does. Well, I can't, I'm forgetting her name right now. Bella I, Ramsey. Yeah, Bella, Bella Ramsey, Ramsey. Thank you. Yeah, dude. There's that one shot where she yells "What the fuck" at um she was Tess really funny. and Joel, and she sounded just like Ashley Johnson. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah, f- hell yeah. Even if she doesn't sound like Ashley Johnson, I think she was. She's been great so far. Well, like yeah. one, great. one of my favorite little things about like the video game is just as you're playing through the game, like as yourself walking around. Joel and Ellie will have like little voice lines that will throw yeah. back to each other, and yeah. they're super funny interactions. Like all, every single one of them. So I'm really excited for this sh- this show to have like just a little like interactions of Ellie and Joel kind of becoming that father and daughter dynamic. Yeah. Even though they're like they hate each other in the start, and they start to like care. For- I'm I'm excited to see I, that. I, yeah. yeah. I was, just on top of that, I was just gonna add quick that I loved I loved when Ellie broke freaking Joel's code radio code right yeah. right at the start so because she he wakes up and she's like i don't know it's like the song that she's never heard and then yeah. he he you can see in him he gets a little scared and then she's like haha oh, broke it <laughs> did you guys pick up i, love that. I was reading i thought it was kind of weird that he had that written down though yeah me like too. joel would just, he would just he would just he would know, know, know that if a 60s song was playing it meant that like why would he write it down and be like 60s is no good since right. he's been a smuggler for 20 like, years like, yeah, you know, like why like, would he have it written down in a little um, book but. Did you guys pick up? I saw it trending on on Twitter, and I looked at it, and it made a total ton of sense. Apparently, um, in two thousand three, the the main spread of the cordyceps virus. I assume it's still the cordyceps virus. They didn't actually really. They did. That. They say cord. Uh, they name drop cordyceps a oh, couple times. Well, the main spread of it was through flour. 
Mm-hmm. And the only reason why Joel and Sarah didn't get infected is because he forgot to to buy a pancake mix. Mm. For for, for, his, for his birthday. That makes good sense. Little, uh, good little analysis. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not, they, they never really like, talked about, like, they talked about it being a fungus cordyceps, but they never talked about, like, how it entered the system. Yeah. Of yeah. Well, I was just saying, like, they didn't, con- like, it's it's definitely cordyceps, because that's how it is in the game. But, like, I know the, the dog, the, the scientist at the beginning, he, he named drops cordyceps, but he was also dropping, like, a bunch of different types of funguses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... But no, it's it's obviously cordyceps. Well, that's what I mean. Like, though, but like even after like in like the quarantine zone, they yeah. they say cordyceps. Okay. Oh, okay, they do. Yeah. That but was also that scene was also so. I th- I honestly thought that one scene when they were um, breaking out of the of the quarantine zone, I thought it was so much better in the show than in the game. Yeah. It looks when really Joel cool. like when Joel like, jumped in front of Ellie and then he had that little flashback to him with Sarah and he just fucking snapped. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, and then you can see that kind of like little look on Ellie's face of her like kind of being like hell yeah he's protecting me yeah. <laughs> yeah. this guy's this guy's kind of sick yeah yeah no, that's great it's awesome yeah i'm super excited and then i'm gonna i'm gonna see the episode in the theater on thursday yeah that's yeah. kind of cool he's going to a private screen yeah, that's awesome of the... yeah a bunch of the film students got like the the remaining tickets for the big theater showing of the of the first episode that they're hosting in calgary for just all the people who worked on it so yeah that's sweet that's awesome pretty cool pretty hyped about that yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, excited to see what comes of it, and uh, me too, man. Yeah, very much, a... very much adored, uh, adored the first episode. Very happy with it. Yeah. I'm in episode eight. Um, one, <laughs> one thing I will say though, really quickly, I don't know if like I don't know if you noticed this in the video games because it's honestly been a while since I played them. But the one thing I thought was kind of weird is um, spoiler alert, maybe a little bit for the show. You can mute me, but the the beginning. Uh, of the, the infection, the, the zombies have like these weird things coming out of their mouth. Hey, they're not zombies; they're or infected. The infected, right? Sorry. Um, it's uh tendrils. Yeah. Yeah. Tendrils. Yeah, it's like, tendrils. It the weird because tentacle thingies. did you see the video of? I think it was Neil Druck. No, it was it was a Chris Ma- 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 Mazin. Um, explained the tendrils. It was mm. a concept that Naughty Dog have experimented with and worked on when they were early developing of the of the original game okay. to substitute for the spores. Mm. Um. Oh, and then, oh, so it's just like that's their substitution. And in the show, they realized it made a ton of more sense to do like the tendril thing of like the I don't even know how to explain it. Just like, well, yeah, because they're not doing spores in the yeah. show. But um, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's just their replacement. It, it's okay. because the ten the 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 spores made more sense as a game mechanic to like fill yeah, up well, the location yeah. and like, like, the yeah. gameplay and all that. But in the show, if you're trying, you were tr- when you're trying to make it realistic and real and based in reality, something like the spores, where it's so hardcore, well, spread it would be air, like the happening. It would be exactly exactly. It'd it would be like the happening. Everyone would like, die. You'd just be like chilling, and then you take a breath in, and you'd be like, "I'm dead. Yeah. I'm gonna jump off a building now." Yeah. yeah. So it made more sense to to go with the previously worked on um, method, and that yeah, it would, it's uh, no, airborne it's, uh, virus is just too deadly. Yeah. Yeah. Too, too granted, deadly. the spores would have been cool, but well, yeah, it's also uh, just hard to do, and also. So yeah. they would never do it because then everyone always has to wear a goddamn mask. And Which then, I'm then interested. To see, I'm curious. To, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what they're gonna do when when Joel finally believes that Ellie is immune. Because yeah, they did this scene where she like pulls up the sleeve and then and all that stuff. But like in the game, it it doesn't finally click to Joel like, being like, holy shit, she's not kidding. Well, when she goes into <clears> the <throat> into like the room with all the spores and is not wearing a mask. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it also makes an interesting point for season two though. Because in the second game, there's a whole scene where um, they like go into a spore room and they're like fighting, and everyone's freaking out because Ellie's fighting them and she's in the spores, and they're like, "She's not dying to the spores!" Like she's giving herself away there too. But it's like it's interesting, like how they're gonna give those little elements away. Yeah. Because it's yeah, there's no there's no way for her to be like no tendrils. I know we talked about this in a previous um, podcast episode, but I hope they go with they they do um, tackle the Last of Us Part Two story. I do hope they do. Well, I thought I but thought they talked about the, they were going to do just they the two are, games and that's it. But I, I think they were playing with their words there. I think what they meant to say is they're not going to continue past where the story ends, but there could be stuff to tell in between. So what I mean by that mm-hmm. is if they do do the part two story, that might not be till season four or like season three. And yeah. maybe the next season is something original or something that Neil Druckmann wrote but just didn't have the, an opportunity to actually put in the game. Maybe. Yeah. So, that could be cool. See what the future of the show is. For sure. Because there's five years between part one and part two. Yeah. Yeah. There is five years, so you have a whole lot of characters, and like we, you could introduce Dina and all those guys it's in the show. A whole lot of time. Yeah. To play with. Yeah. So. Be cool you to see where know. it goes. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I, is, yeah, is I mean, that everything we got from Last of Us? I think uh, so. Yeah. Um, is there any other thing? What else has, has come out recently? Oh, shit! The fucking Mandalorian Season 3 trailer came out literally the day after the first episode of Last of Us came out. Oh, really? Pedro Pascal has everyone in a chokehold for literally the next three months. <laughs> He's daddy. Yeah. Like... Yes. The fucking Mando premieres on season on March first, and this this show is gonna still be running. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah well, uh, I know. It looks incredible yeah. too. Yeah, Ortega ate up last year too, so Peter <laughs> Trasco's year is zero. Yeah, it's his yeah. year. All right, all right, well, I guess that's it for the last of us. Um, yeah, I guess we can talk about um, seventy-five hundred. He got off the random um, letterbox roll. Yeah, the letterbox roll. Letterbox roll last. Holy last shit. Podcast. I was not expecting that movie. Yeah, this is blown insane. away. When we got it on the freaking Letterboxd or last like, podcast, as I was like, like movie or I was like, what in the hell is that? Yeah. And then I freaking watched it, and let me tell you, within the first five minutes, I was like, yes, this is how you make a goddamn movie. Yeah. And like, a mo- not let alone a movie in a fucking tiny ass location. That's what I mean. The whole film took place in just a single location. It was... I was blown. Like, yeah. How much of the movie actually took place awesome. outside of the cockpit? Uh, almost, like, none of it. Yeah, like, maybe when he was There's walking in at the very beginning. The, yeah, like, the very first, like, opening, like, kind of scroll of, like, him, like, going through all the security cameras, right? Yeah. But, yeah. um... Yeah, no, almost every single shot, even though, like... Even when the movie ends, it just holds on like a shot of the cockpit door. Yeah, the l- let you out of it. Average yeah. letterbox rating for seventy five hundred is three out of five stars. That's a- that's average, obviously. Um, it was so good. The tension. If I would have given it my rating, I would say four and a half. Yeah, I got. I mean, the only thing I would say, and uh, the movie came out in twenty nineteen. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it, so I'm gonna say something that might be a little spoilery. Uh, but um, the only thing I thought was a little cheap for like an emotional hit was the fact that him and his wife just randomly happened to be on the same flight like crew and like yeah then the, they grabbed her out of everyone in the fucking plane and like yeah. threatened her as a hostage and like yeah yeah she, fair. She, but, like it's a little bit of a cheap thing to just like be like his wife was there I was like yeah that's obviously gonna hit emotionally you don't like you, you losing can, your wife is horrible but you can yeah, also tell well, the movie was low budget because, like, whenever someone dies, it cuts away from them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, like, I was like, yeah. that was, like, the one indication. I was like, oh, okay, this is a low budget film, which I have no issue with. Uh, uh, for it being a low budget film, whatever, what have you, it was great. It, it was hit, awesome. Hit emotionally. Yeah. The tension was awesome. Uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt brings the act, like, oh, brings yeah. the fucking. Oh, yeah. His performance is yeah. awesome. Wow. It was really good. It was really good. I was blown away. I did not expect it. Yeah, I was no. thoroughly surprised. It's very emotionally hitting, and it's a tough little ride. Uh, it was been a while. I was just sitting at my uh, sitting in my room, just like screaming, being like, "Anyone, please yeah. come from the back of the plane <laughs> yeah. and help!" Yeah, like please. I understand they have glass and it's scary and it's it's intimidating. But, but the majority please. of you will overpower. Yeah, yeah, I was like, but please just come save these people's lives. That how they just on. did it too late. How do you, you used to work at an airport? You didn't work security. How do you think they would smuggle this fucking glass? Well, if oh, you, you watched, didn't, didn't see at the beginning, he goes to uh, he goes to security all fine, empty-handed, and then he goes to um, like the duty the little, free, yeah, duty free, and he buys like six bottles of uh, like Liquor. rum. Uh, puts them in his backpack, takes them to the bathroom, dumps them all out, breaks them up into the ba- in the bathroom, and then takes them and all then the they make little shivs oh, out of it. Take I the must have missed that part. I'm it's just it's honest. just in the security yeah. cameras. You just have to be paying attention. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I must have missed that part because I was watching it on the train. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, well, no, yeah. If you're not watching in an optimal <laughs> environment, then it's not going to. You're obviously going to miss not, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to miss. But then, um, yeah, no, it, it was. Especially too when oh like when the the initial rush to the cockpit yeah happens just happens, it happens so quick happens so quick and it it's feels just, so I knew it was gonna real happen at that point though it like, feels so grounded oh yeah oh, yeah obviously you can see you, him like you can see him like kicking up the curtain yeah with his foot, being like oh when is she gonna open the door yeah but then when it hits like it just feels so real yeah like the struggle the fight. Everything mm. just felt really grounded. And I think it helps it because so the whole hard. film took place in that cockpit. Yeah. It doesn't go outside the cockpit. So you're there in Joseph Gordon-Levitt's shoes. Like, you're 
because you're there. You're, you're with, with them. Him, yeah. You're yeah. not exactly. anywhere else. You're not jumping to like the radio control tower, which you could. It, it could have done that. That was right? one of my favorite things too, though. Like yeah. there's so much action going on, and then in the background, you can just hear, hear like the radio control trying. typing, like Mayday, what's happening? What's going on? Can you come in? Like report your status. Report. And it's like it all just feels so real because like the entire time everything is going on, you can just hear like the radio. Like you're obviously just in. Joseph's shoes because like even when it does like the little bit of like passengers boarding mm -hmm. you can just constantly hear like the radio chatter in the background of like what he's going through what he's doing yeah it's great yeah. it's really great yeah. it's an awesome little flick if you haven't seen it yeah I recommend it's it. it's that it's one of those Disney's easy 90 minute watches I was gonna ask who do you think's phone was ringing at the end uh, the 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 terrorist or like the kids kids you think it was ringing? his mom yeah it's the same phone ring his mom called him because she's obviously watching on the news because she like found out. Yeah. Because he didn't explain anything to them. He just said I trusted them. So yeah. she obviously knew what they went through and th they did. Yeah. Um, so she was obviously watching on the news. And then obviously when she sees the cops, the only watching, other the only reason I ask is the only other thought I had was maybe it was his wife's phone for her mom calling them. Because mm -hmm. remember at right at the start he she was like my mom just texted or whatever and said blah blah blah. So I didn't like I just had the thought maybe it could be but then I was like I pretty sure that's the same ringtone. Yeah. No, it sucks. It sucked. Yeah. It sucked. It was, I mean, it was great, but it sucks to watch Cause, it. Like, because you only there. You can only put yourself in his shoes, so you're just thinking like, "Fuck, what would I do?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, I wouldn't do anything different." Because like, it's so difficult. Because you're sitting there being like, "He can't open the door." If he mm -hmm. opens the door, everyone in the plane dies. Plus, maybe some, a bunch of people. A bunch on the of ground. people on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, you can't open you the can't. door. Like you, you can't. can't. It, yeah. I'm sorry. It sucks, and yeah. you're gonna feel like the worst person it's on horrible. the planet. But you cannot open that door. No you cannot what. give up the plane. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. It, that's what I mean. It's that's crazy. why I'm like my letterbox review for it is just it hurts you in all the right ways because mm -hmm. it does. It, it hurts really you does. so well. It it delivers pain on a silver platter, but you accept it because it's delivered really nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm curious what this guy's made now. Directed by Patrick Valrath. I probably butchered that name, but it doesn't look like anything huge. No, I think this was his first, thing. like, debut. Feature, feature film? Feature film. This one. 2014. Is this a short? I don't even see a runtime. I don't see one either. Might be a short. But yeah, this looks like his only official film. Um, Good job. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, what's, what's I think when okay? I looked it up, I think it said, go over to just the, the first tab that I have open quick, and just see, it might say... This looks like a movie too. Okay, so maybe this came up before it. Yeah, it's on Canopy. Okay, which is probably his second film. Yeah, cool. Whatever it is, really well done. Yeah, that was awesome. The, the Patrick, good job, man. Well done. It was good. I, 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 yeah, I was sweating. I was so yeah. tense. Yeah, I was sweating. My fists were clenched. I just wanted something to happen. I want some action to do, something. especially too when um. Uh, Joseph's at like the ending and Joseph's on the ground unconscious and the kid's like I don't want to die I don't want to die and he's just hyperventilating I'm like if you are, don't want to die then just do something about yeah. it drop the fucking glass I'm yeah. just like just, then just do something if you don't want your buddy to crash his plane into the city right now well then fucking stop <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> that's not that movie is it <laughs> That movie. <laughs> no, no, I just opened up my watch list. I didn't roll it. Yeah, no, he hasn't rolled yet. I was but. like, anyway, before we roll it, I um, wanted to uh, roll into the way quick. of water. Yeah, you know what else has me cause... clenching my fist in, um, full of anxiety? The way of water. The way of water surrounds us. Wild, man. Yeah. That was incredible. I'm Bro. mind blown by it way of water visually one of the greatest things i've ever oh, seen in my entire life absolutely oh story my. wise it was extremely similar structurally to the first yeah movie. this is i yes. this is i i said this and i don't want to sound offensive but i'm like james cameron he's not one he's not the best writer on the world but he is one of the best world builders oh the world. 100 that guy is so goddamn creative but he, his stories are kind of made. Him, that, that's just like George Lucas. George yeah. Lucas can't write to save his life. No. But, but wow. Yeah. What he's created and what he's done with those movies is 
something else. I know, like, there's not much lore in the movies themselves, but if you ever just, like, bored and you decide to just search up Avatar lore, it's actually quite interesting. Well, there's a ton of lore, but not even just that, but it's just, like, immediately out the gate, especially with the Way of Water, it just sucks you right into Pandora, and you're just yeah. in Pandora, you're just with the animals, the, like, the wildlife, yeah. the fauna, yeah. it's so great. Um, hot take. Cool. I just recently went to go see rewatch the movie in um, Laser Ultra, also the D box. I honestly, I kind of fucked with the high frame rate. I mm. thought the high frame yeah. rate was fine. I yeah. thought it was cool. In no, the it does shots, work. it does work. In the shots that there was the high frame rate, it takes it. it takes a little bit to get used to at first because mm-hmm. you're like, like definitely not used to seeing it on in yeah. film. But then, like, yeah, 20 minutes into the movie, you're oh, like, hell yeah. Oh. yeah. There was wow. the one shot that literally almost made me tear up because I was just in I was just in awe of the beauty and how immersive it was and how crazy it was. Because I was also in the D-Box, too. And if you don't know what the D-Box is, that shit, li- the, your seat literally moves and flies around with the mo- motion of the movie. And it was in the I first, don't know about like, it for three hours, but... It was in the first five minutes of the movie when Natiri and Jake Sully are, like, flying around, just having a lovely time before the fucking human aliens come back. Mm. Just loving their life. That scene was in 60 frames, and it was, like, the one shot of them doing it. It was, like, yeah. fucking flying around in the fucking, um, in the, uh... Hallelujah Mountains? Yeah. Yeah, the D-Box was fun. Like, yeah. I didn't mind it for the three hours. Yeah, I can see, like... If anything past the three hours, I would have probably got annoyed and just turned the setting I all the way down. I haven't used the D-Box since Rogue One. It was so worth it. It was so worth it. I can see how it would be a pretty fun experience, definitely yeah. for Avatar. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was like Especially was in the water. Like, the water and the flight scenes, you yeah. know, the D-Box really yeah. stood out. Yeah. It was, yeah, I just, I cannot believe how good it looks. Like, yeah. 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 I just like yeah. I cannot believe it. Simply cannot believe it. No, I still can't. Like you, I I mean I saw the movie. I've only I've seen the movie three times. Um, saw it in. Uh, we saw it in IMAX three D. Yeah, IMAX and then uh, Laser Ultra. If you haven't seen the movie, I or if you haven't seen the movie in Laser Ultra yet with the high frame rate, if you have a chance to, the theater near you plays it. I recommend it. I definitely do. Yes. Yeah. When the movie opened in Laser Ultra and like the there's a the, also the Atmos sound. Um, with Dolby sound is so crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's uh, a shot when um, Atiri is riding on her like Ikran, and you don't get it in IMAX because IMAX is just like super loud bassy noise. But in, with Adobe Atmos, you can hear like the wings of her like Ikran like rippling in the wind, like the wind whipping off of them, and it sounded so good yeah. and it looked so clean with the Laser Ultra, and it's just so oh, it it sucks you in immediately and just yeah. pulls you right into like. Everything and also Jake being hardcore dad was good, good, good fucking times, good moments for that. Oh, Have yeah. all the girls on TikTok simping over Jake Sudi, dude. I was <laughs> simping over him in the first movie, man. Yeah. God damn. But it's uh, the one line that, that I absolutely love is when the the two guys come back from the two sons come back from like playing with the whale or whatever. How's the and other guy look? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. He fights the other guy and then he's like, he's like, worse, this, he's like worse. this is my fault. He's like, this is not your fault. You gotta stop taking the heat for this knucklehead. And I'm like, I fucking love that line, dude. It's, him being a dad is so But also Jake so like, like, at the, like, at the town being like, so how's the other guy look? And he's like, worse, much worse. He's like, hey. well, that's good. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because so, yeah. well, Loak told them that they were picking on Cutie and yeah. he was like, Okay, well that's unacceptable. But yeah. I can't I can't say that. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So great film. Definitely recommend to watch. You have to see it. Yeah. James. Like do it. If, you did it. If, if, you did it. If you're yeah. a big story guy, you're gonna it, very, very much see that it, it it's the same as the first movie. It, it, oh, yeah. yeah, basically. And he's about to cross two billion back globally. Yeah. It's like. The Force Awakens, again. <laughs> like, The Force Awakens was extremely similar to Star Wars. He did it. Yeah. He did it. <laughs> to, the, to, the, to the first Star Wars. Yeah. And same with Avatar The Way of Water. I mean, it's, oh, it's the same thing. I mean, it's, same, it's, it's James Cameron, like, easy writing. But it's, like, the one thing that I thought was so stupid is when uh, Kitty has her, like, little, like, seizure and then, like, uh, passes out. It's, like, the first thing they do after going into hiding is to call a helicopter yeah, to yeah. come out to where they're hiding and get trapped is like that wasn't the best thinking guys no. that was obviously James just being like how do I get him to find him yeah and it's like I guess yeah. I'll just get him to go over there like why the fuck would they go in a helicopter 
Miles Quaritch has to find Jake Sully at some point. Also, the fact that he's still alive is kind of stupid, but... Oh, that he got brought back because he's a recon? Well, that's the, the the fact that they're going to bring him back for the third one as well. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. It's James just, Cameron was explaining it. He was justifying it. It was like, like if you look at a movie like like the, like Star, any Star Wars movie or any Marvel movie, the villains the, the villain is a one movie wonder. They come they they come they're there for one movie and then they're gone. Except for like the the odd ones like Thanos who was there for two movies and Kang who was there for three movies. But for the most part, every villain is one movie. But he said he wants Korich to be the main villain for all of them. Well, the problem with the villains is they're usually pretty one-dimensional. Yeah, well, it's just like Darth Vader. Darth Vader was the villain for four movies. Yeah. Darth Vader yeah. The, uh, but Darth Vader wasn't also the villain for four movies. Darth Vader was the villain for the first one, and then Emperor Palpatine was the villain for the next yeah. two. Palpatine wasn't the main villain of uh, Empire. Pretty much was. Luke is like, the yeah, sure, they have a lightsaber fight, but Palpatine's like literally sitting there being like, Vader, kill him. That's, Do it, Vader. That's, 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 Return of the Jedi. Yeah, well, I know, but the last, the, the, still, even in like the fifth one, Emperor Palpatine starts coming in and having more of a hand and being think like he's in the there. master. He's not. He's the only only scene of, of Palpatine in, in Empire is when Lord is when Darth Vader has like a FaceTime call with him halfway. Oh, well, fair. <laughs> Regardless, I'm still saying Star Wars even branches out onto more than one villain. Still, but he's still, but there's the, always that one villain that hangs around the whole time. And I think yeah, that's for what, sure. I'm pretty sure that's what Korridge is gonna be. There's but gonna there's it's just kind of fucking dumb because <laughs> he's already died one time they basically just had a, a pretty much heart to heart where he's just like i'm never gonna stop killing you and then jake was like okay then i'll just kill you again here let's just get it done yeah. and so they fight and then he wins just, again and then the kid's like oh he's he's dead that kind of sucks I'll, I'll save him that's my dad he's my dad boogie 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 uh like you know pulls it out of the fucking water and he's like Come with me, my son. And he's like, go fuck yourself, dude. Get out of here. And then leaves him. Yeah. And it's like, well, why did you pull him out of the fucking that water was the, then? Like, that was definitely the one character moment where I was like, that's definitely an interesting choice. Why the yeah. fuck did you pull him out of the goddamn water? Yeah. Like, if you don't fucking care, why don't, why? <laughs> like, just god fucking damn it's it, probably James. Like, inherently it's spi- just lazy. It's probably because inherently Spider's like, well, he's my dad. I, yeah, be well, my but, dad, but, but I'm going to go back times, to my real dad But the now. amount of times that he's like, he ain't mine. We he ain't, ain't my dad. Fuck species. this guy. Yeah. Like, he, saw him get, he just saw him his ass got handed to him, and he's like, I feel kind of bad for this fucking loser or whatever. I'll pull him out of the water. Yeah. He's like, that's dumb, but whatever. James, you fucking hit the nail on the goddamn head. Jimmy, you, Jimmy. You did something different. Did Jimmy C, did you're it. a fucking, yeah. you're insane. Yeah. Can't, wait for, yeah. can't wait for three to make you three billion dollars instead of two. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I'm waiting for four and five, baby. I'm very <laughs> did you excited. see what James Cameron said about Avatar 4? He was like, I really hope the studio makes me, or he said, I really hope the studio lets me make the fourth one. And he's like, why? He's like, well, because the fourth one's a real fucker. <laughs> Like yeah. <laughs> the fourth one's a real fucker. Okay, fair enough. Too bitch to make. He's gotta go to. He's gotta go to space. He's gotta develop new technology. Well, apparently Edward Norton got turned down a role for Avatar, because he because James Cameron came to Edward Norton with a role for the humans, and he was like, I don't want to be a fucking human in that movie. No. Well, fair. Nobody wants to be a fucking human. In that movie. He was like, want to be an Avatar. He was like, be a Navi. I will happily be a Navi in Avatar, but if you only have a role planned for me as a human. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to do that. Edward Norton would have just been the next like guy who wants Unobtainium. And Unobtainium. Yeah. Just the new guy at the desk with a Well, strong. Unobtainium yeah. wasn't the goal in the second movie. It was literally just a move there. It's, yeah, that's just... Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's not, like, well, Unobtainium might still be like a little side project, but the, well, the yeah. main goal of the second one is to just like take Kill over them. the planet. Yeah. Well, it's to the t- it's set up a new home base for the human race, but they're also taking the... Well, Earth was already dead in the first movie, so now that they're coming back, Earth is, there's nothing left for them. Well, well, yeah. This is their so new that's home. What, that's, this yeah, is that's humanity's what I mean. they're new They're setting Earth. up a new home base. Well, it's Earth. not that Earth is dead. Earth is there. It's just it's very much an it's ecological un- collapse. Well, that's what Jake said. They, we killed our own planet. Yeah. It's still there, though, because if you watch the extended version of it. Well, yeah, it's still there, but still... it's uninhabitable. Yeah. There's billions of people there. Well, Jared, th- that's why in this second movie, like 20 years later, or fucking whatever, 10 years later, Yeah. They're all coming. Yeah, that's why all the ships. Everyone, show up. the Earth is finally dead. They can't live. Pandora is now New Earth. The the that's the, why they set up a city so fast. That's because they're trying to take over Pandora. Okay, so but there's still people on Earth. There. Yeah, for now, but they're yeah, getting now. the fuck out yeah, of there. Yeah, Earth is in the process of dying because there's an ecological disaster. Everything's yeah. falling apart. Yes, hundred percent. 
But like, it's not like Earth is just a barren wasteland. There's no humans left on it. There's still people there. It's it's they're still. Yes, there. but they're in the proce- process yes. of turning it into the Wally movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wally. Okay. Anyway, should we roll our next next podcast movie? Um, yeah, yeah let's let's roll yeah. it. Why not? Hey, can you imagine if we got Salo? <laughs> I don't know why. I, that's why. Uh, we would have to rebuy it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Because you can only, I'm pretty sure you can only watch it off, I mean, unless unless it's on the Criterion channel. But that's something I don't know if I want to sit through again. Shuffle. Oh, Quiet Place. Quiet Place Two. Two. You haven't seen this one? I have not actually. What? Well, damn, I could talk about it right now. Yeah, me too. Well, fuck you guys. Should we just re-roll them? Well, well, I don't no. know. We can, we can, well, we we can, can talk about Quiet Place Part Two. All right. I haven't, that means seen, I'll have to watch I haven't the... seen it since the theaters. I'm going to be completely honest. That means I have to watch the first movie, too. You haven't seen the first movie? No. Bro. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, you okay. John Krasinski hate out here, man. Okay. I, just, I just said his last name so wrong. John Krasinski? Yeah. <laughs> Give him some hate out here, man. Yeah. I, that's why they're on watch list, because I want to watch them. I just haven't okay, watched well, them yet. Busted. We'll watch, I guess, A Quiet Place 1 and 2, and then we'll talk about them. Just the quiet place double feature in two weeks. Are they? We'll no, the they episode. are both on the stream. I'm pretty sure I've seen Valentine's them. Day special quiet yeah. place part one and two. I haven't seen. No, they're on a streaming service. I'm pretty sure they're no. on Prime. Or something <laughs> it's like not. That. It's the end of January. We're doing a special Valentine's Day. Episode. Yeah. Okay, so that's the film we're watching for next week's episode. If you guys want to watch it, watch Quiet Place Part 2 or Part 1 and Part 2 like me because I haven't seen either. I'm like these guys. They've both seen it, so they're just going to watch yeah. it again. We don't just watch um, Fast and Furious on repeat. We like yeah. to expand our horizons, you know? Bruh, I haven't seen... <laughs> I haven't seen a Fast movie Get in like... Get called out. I'm pretty sure the last Rack. time I watched a Fast movie was like six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> six months ago? That's still, that's still like a lot longer. Than, there's a lot sooner than I've seen a Fast movie. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in well, this week. Well, we're not done yet. We're going to give us some updates of what the year. Damn it, Hunter. Oh, yeah. I guess so. Well, go ahead. Uh, well, I Fuck just... Me. Well, whatever. <laughs> we can just end it now. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, 2023, we just have... For the year, we just have uh, what the year's going to look like. We just are planning on doing a couple of... Uh, Short film festivals throughout the year to try yeah. and get some. Uh... So here in Alberta, there's a there's actually a bunch. So you know, so last year, if you, if you've been watching us for a little bit or if you were aware of us, um, the the our film Dog Gone we did in May. That was part of the Okotoks four to eight hour film festival, and we fully plan on doing that again. Yeah. Um, but not just that. There's actually quite a bit of four to eight hour film festivals, film challenges, all sprinkled around um, our area, and we we're like, why the hell not? It's a great. It's a every time you do one, it's a great opportunity to like really challenge yourself to make something in such an incredibly short period of time, like brutally short period of time. Like it's fucked. Yeah. It's actually fucked. Um, yeah, I know. But it's, it's fun. a challenge and it's it fun. Is, it is fun. We, we like enjoyed it last year for the most part. Well, we and, won audience um, choice. That was definitely fun. Well, it's a good way to like keep up your creativity, like I said. Yeah, like because you're for because they give you to... stuff that you have to make a story for. They give yeah. you a prompt. They give you a style. They give you a prop. Make something happen. Yeah. Um, like for Dog Gone, we got Tarantino movie is adventure with party streamers. Yeah, party streamers. Like what the fuck? Um, yeah. So there's we're gonna be doing the Calgary there's Underground Film Festival. Steamers. We're gonna be doing the we're gonna be doing the Calgary Underground Festival, Film Festival, the um, Cuff, that forty hour. That's at the beginning of May. Uh, we'll be doing Okotoks at the end of May, and then there's we're doing a couple of them. Anyone's there's a couple. There's a that. couple in there's a couple in July. One's a mobile device film festival. It's in yeah, forty eight hours. Yeah. Those and will be in the next couple months, and then we're yeah. Hoping, throughout the year we'll be doing festivals. And but, then we're planning to get a short out for February. That is correct. We have an, like an actual, well. Every short film was an actual short film, but like outside of the four dollar challenges for our short films, we have a short film planned for at some End point February. in February. We're gonna be shooting it around the middle of February, so yeah. I'd say optimistically look for it sometime at the end of the at the end of February or beginning of March. I'd say Maybe, beginning yeah. of March. Probably end of February. Um, yeah. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's going to be fun. You'll probably see BTS posted on our Instagram and stuff. Yeah, that's something uh, we're going to be trying to implement this year as well. Yeah, lots yeah. of BTS, BTS videos. Lots of, of... More like, yeah, behind-the-scenes kind of vlogs, little stuff like that. We're going to 
try and do a couple little of uh, like shorts here and there, uh, yeah. like different things. Jared yeah. has one cooking about his equipment that he's working on. So yeah, lots of YouTube shorts, not short films. Yeah. Like yeah, sorry, YouTube shorts. Yeah, YouTube short shorts films. slash TikTok slash Instagram reels. I'm really like we're gonna be. I'm gonna be making them for all of them. So you've probably been seeing a bunch of the YouTube shorts that are podcast highlights. That's ideally not just going to be what our shorts are going to be. We're also going to have lots of original YouTube shorts, whether it be like a shortened version of an actual YouTube video or just something that's dedicated for a YouTube short, maybe because it was just a cool idea that maybe was only needed for one minute. And then, yeah. And it's just one minute. Like a spec ad or something like that we're going to yeah. try to throw up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's really all we got planned um, to announce at the moment. We got some, we got a, we got a couple, we got a couple big things brewing things that we haven't officially, out. um, like that we aren't ready to come out with yet. Yeah. Um, you might look, see some cool big things in the next month. I'd say we'll see how we'll see how it goes. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um, yeah. get it going. Yeah, but that's really all we got for today. You know, we talked about some good things: Last of Us, um, Avatar: The Way of Water, seventy five hundred. Yeah. Uh, in two weeks, because our episode, our episode, our podcast, sorry, are biweekly now. Uh, to give yeah, us more, too, for to creatively give us more time to do other things, because like I'm full time in school, I'm busy up the ass this next couple months actually, um, and then obviously be work and stuff. But yeah, so in two weeks you'll see the next episode. Uh, they come out Wednesdays now, and yeah. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Product Show Podcast. I'm Jared Somerville. I'm Tristan Toma. I'm Hunter Latchuk. And yeah, get breezy, stay cool. Yeah. See you soon. Thanks. <laughs>